Nano Machine, by Han Jung Weolia. Chapter 56, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 1. Chen Youwon was shocked. He had never felt such powerful energy ever since he had learned martial arts. Telekinesis. It required a very high amount of internal energy and a lot of understanding of qi, but it allowed one to even lift a person up into the air. He's a powerful warrior. Yoan had unleashed 100% of his energy, but even he couldn't resist against the power. And the old man was very hostile, Yoan could feel it on his skin. I will get killed if I don't do anything. Yoan then tried all he could to regain control over his body. As his muscles became tense, the body began to move slowly. This boy has a tremendous amount of physical power. The internal energy was only at about 60 years worth, but Yoan's muscle strength was like that of a monster. The old man had seen many warriors in his life, but he had never seen a man with this amount of muscle strength. It was due to the nano machine strengthening Chen Yuan's muscles so that he could physically damage the blue pearl stone. He resists too much. Oomph. As Chen Yuan kept on squirming, it sucked too much energy from the old man and he made a gesture to pull him in. Yuan was then sucked toward the old man's hand. Arg. The old man grabbed Yuan's neck. The energy was so powerful that even a slight twist was going to snap Yoan's neck. That's when Yoan heard Nano's voice in his head. Detected powerful hostile energy threatening the user. Activating emergency defense mode. But Yoan put a stop to it quickly. No, Nano. Hold for a second. Nano's defense mode was to send out electricity from the body, but Yoan thought the enemy was too powerful for such an attack to work. If it failed, then it was only going to make the enemy even angrier. If this old man wanted to kill me, he would have done so already. Yoan's guess was correct. The old man could have killed Yoan the moment he barged in here. Although he was still wary of the old man, Yoan stopped resisting the old man smiled. I wanted to come see the one who made waste of my grandson. You seem to have grasped the situation quickly. If Yoan tried to resist in some way, he would have been attacked with the incoming energy, thus damaging his internal organs. Grandson? Yoan's eyes shook. There was no way he couldn't understand it. The Poison Clan. This old man was the leader of the Poison Clan, Beko the Demonic Poison Hand. Chen Yuan was shocked. He thought the Poison Clan would try to do something in retaliation for what had happened, but he didn't think the leader himself would come for him. Do you know why I came to see you myself? Arg, are you here to kill me? The hostility proved it. There was no way the leader of the house would forgive Yuan for destroying the prince's internal energy and shattering all of his bones. Think. Think about how to get out of this situation. Yoan tried to keep calm to think about it, but there was no way. He was going to die the second back O twisted his hand. Am I going to die here? And when he came to such a conclusion, what came to him was anger, not the fear of death. He was angry that he was going to die before getting his revenge. His eyes? The 15-year-old boy was at the brink of death, but his eyes were now filled with anger and determination. Beko was surprised. However, he couldn't allow anyone to make such eyes toward one of the top 10 leaders of the demonic cult. Oomph. You need some punishment. Arg. Beko put his energy into the staff and smacked Yoan's stomach. The energy was so powerful that it Yoan felt the immediate pain and blood soared up through his throat. Now, you won't make such eyes, huh? Beko was dumbfounded. He had expected Yoan to be in pain, but his angry eyes still remained. Beko didn't know this, but Yoan's internal damage was healed instantly by the nano machine. It still gave him pain whenever he was hit, but the pain didn't last for long as the damage was healed quickly. So, you're not like any other child. Beko shook his head. He figured Yoan would be very vengeful, thus destroying the internal energy, but Beko didn't think it would be this serious. He will be problematic if I let him be. Beko was going to decide what to do with Chen Yoan after meeting him, and now he decided that he shouldn't let Yoan be. Beko's hostility began to strengthen, and Yoan spoke to him. Are you going to kill me? You know the answer to that yourself. You are going against the academy rules if you do. Don't think such a petty rule will control me. I will kill you here and melt your body with my poison so no one will notice. Beko didn't think about leaving any traces. Yoan then became silent for a second and then said, You can erase the trace, but if I disappear within the academy, the poison clan will be the main suspect for it anyway. Beko raised his eyebrow at such a sharp thought. A 15-year-old boy at the brink of death was not afraid. Instead, he was thinking everything through rather thoroughly. He really is dangerous. Yoan had powers beyond his anger, determination over fear, and decision-making skills for each situation. All of this showed how dangerous he would be to the Poison Clan if he grew up. 
I would have killed him right now if it wasn't for the academy. Beko became frustrated. He didn't think to kill him at first. As Yoan said, if he killed Yoan here, the Poison Clan was going to be seen as the suspect and the Lord would not look over this. His main reason for visiting him here today was to see Yoan's face and warn him. You are clever. But you still have a lot more to go. Since you hurt my grandson, you have brought this upon yourself. Chapter 57, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 2 Yoan knew he had made a mistake about this one. His lack of experience and uncontrolled anger had made it come down to this. As you said, even I can't kill you while you are here, but... Beko's hand quickly moved over Yoan's blood point, freezing him. Yoan couldn't speak anymore, and Beko continued, let me promise you this. As soon as you leave the protection of the demonic academy, you will be given pain beyond imagination. Beko's eyes were on fire from the anger from the pain that his grandson had gone through. You have shattered my grandson's bones, so I will shatter your bones and carve out your flesh to feed it to the animals. Then I will destroy your internal energy and keep you alive so you can beg to be killed. Beko's warning was terrifying. When he was done, he took something out from his pocket. It was a small medicinal ball which was even smellier than the black dragon ball. He then sent a telepathic message. I can't just leave you, so I will give you a small gift. Then we will be able to meet faster. NNNGH. Beko then opened Yoan's mouth forcefully. Yoan tried to resist, but he couldn't as the hand that grabbed his neck increased the energy. Arg. Beko then threw the ball down into Yoan's throat. He tried hard to not swallow it, but as the grip on the neck strengthened, the ball went down his throat. It is not a poison that will put your life in danger. But if you ever talk about the ball to anyone, I will not care about the rules of the academy and I will come to kill you myself. He finished with the final warning. NNNNGH. You have been warned. I look forward to our next meeting. Beko then tossed Yoan back inside the cave and flew out. Yoan was stuck next to the inner side of the wall. When Beko came out, the giant stone that acted as the entrance rolled over to seal the cave again. Beko spoke to someone waiting for him outside. I am done. You promised me that you would not harm him. It was left guardian Lee Hamming. Chun Yoan was confused as to how Beko had come to see him, but it was through Lee Hamming that Beko was able to come here. Lee Hamming heard the giant cracking sound coming from within and he was asking about Beko about that. Would you stop yourself from smacking once or twice while standing in front of someone who hurt your family? Haha, <laughs> okay. I will apologize for that. But it is not that bad, so don't worry. I didn't damage him. Okay. Hamming acknowledged it suspiciously and Beko bowed. Thank you for listening to my request, even if it was against the rules. Please make sure no one else knows about this. Of course. I will bring this to my grave. Normally, not even the leaders of the six clans were allowed into the demonic academy. Lee Hamming was worried about the poison clan retaliating against Chun Yoan out of rage and that was why he sent the letter to request them to not attack Chun Yoan, at least inside the academy. Beko then promised that he would accept the request only if he was allowed to see Chun Yoan himself. Lee Hamming valued his connections with the six clans, so he couldn't refuse such a request. I will return. Beko then covered his face with his clothes and used his stepping skills to run down the peak. After checking to make sure Beko had left, Lee Hamming glanced at the cave and mumbled, you have four years before your protection wears off. It is up to you to survive after that. Meanwhile, Chun Yoan was sitting down in meditation. His eyes were closed and his clothes were blackened while the foul stench filled the area. It was what happened after he was flung into the wall. Yoan heard Nano's voice coming to him detected toxic substance coming into the user's throat. He wasn't sure what Beko had made him eat, but he was certain that it was bad so Yoan quickly ordered Nano. Take it out of my body, now. Careful analysis of the substance shows that if some of the toxic components are removed, it will help the internal energy activation, similar to the substance, Black Dragon Ball. What? Toxic components are what diminishes the energy. What Beko fed to him was a medicine ball that made the target lose its internal energy partially. It was so harmful that it created immunity inside the body after one dosage and it could not be used repeatedly. If the one eating was unlucky, it could possibly erase more than half of the internal energy. A powerful warrior with over 90 years worth of internal energy would have ways to extract these poisons when swallowed, but that was the only way to fight it. So, he tried to weaken my internal energy. Beko was going to make Yoan lose his internal energy so that he would fail the third test. However, Beko did not know about Nano. Nano quickly analyzed the substances and came to the conclusion that if only those poisons were removed, the other substances were actually helpful. 
So, I just need to remove those poisons? Yes, master. Phew, good. Then do it. Beginning to remove the toxic components from the substance. And that's what Nana was now doing. Soon, the black ooze began coming out from Yoan's upper torso. It wasn't a lot since it was from a small medicine ball, but the smell was too awful. Ugh. Yoan felt sick over the smell when Nano's voice spread throughout his body. Successfully removed toxic components. The substance now activates the internal energy flow within the body. Yoan then began using his breathing of the thousand marshals to meditate. Chapter 58, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 3. Nano quickly helped the activation of the flow of energy within Yoan's body. After a long time, Yoan opened his eyes. He then smelled the foul stench from the black ooze and took off the clothes that were drenched in the ooze. Ugh, this is really disgusting. He was able to forget about the smell while meditating, but he couldn't bear it anymore when he was awake. He then felt the heat within the cave. It seemed like the energy activation within his body let out some heat, warming up the entire cave. Yoan then felt heaviness under his stomach and felt the weight of his internal energy. Whoa! He gasped in astonishment. The whole incident was a blessing in disguise. The internal energy that was just over 60 years worth now had 90 years worth of energy. Beko's action had resulted in helping Yoan instead of harming him. He really did give me a gift then. Beko's small gift had turned out to be a huge gift. Chen Yoan's internal energy was now within the top 5 out of all the cadets. I would have died if it wasn't for Nano. Nano had given unfortunate Chen Yoan a climactic turn in his life. I was really lucky this time. I never thought the Poison Clan would go so far. He then thought that it was good experience for learning how his wrong decision might come back to him. It was an important lesson. He was lucky this time, but Yoan decided to not make any foolish mistakes. So, what is this? Yoan then got up and walked to the inner part of the cave. It was too dark to see in the cave, but Yoan had night vision from Nano. Nano, night vision mode. Yoan was then able to see the inside of the cave. A part of the inner wall was broken when he was thrown into it by Beko. Something felt weird. Yoan felt like the inside of the wall was empty when his back hit the wall. He felt curious, but he had to focus on taking care of the poisonous medicine ball he ingested. Oh? Air was seeping out from the cracked part of the wall. It was proof that there was space on the opposite. Yoan then became curious. Let's check on it. Yoan began to tap the cracked side with his fist. The wall had too many cracks in it and the slight tapping made it fall apart, making a small hole that Yoan could crawl into. There we go. The hole let cold air come in from the opposite side, making the cave a bit cooler. Yoan then crawled into the dark hole. He then frowned. Huh? Unlike his expectations of seeing a bigger cave, it seemed like a tunnel-like cave that connected somewhere else. Yoan then got up and looked back. The cave wall was shaped as if it was made artificially to block it. The opposite side looked natural so he didn't realize it, but it was very apparent from this side. Was it blocked off intentionally? It seemed like something was hidden inside. Yoan then thought about going in when Nano's voice called out to him. Detected faint natural light coming from the tunnel. Yoan became curious. The only possible natural light source in such a cave could only be from a firefly. Yoan then began to walk in. The cave was located on the peak of the mountain, but this tunnel seemed to lead him below. It's getting brighter. As Nano said, the green-colored light began to grow stronger. He now didn't need night vision mode to see anymore. Yoan then deactivated the night vision and walked in. Soon, he then reached the closed end. It shined very brightly with the light. Yoan then took a step forward and almost fell. The ground in front had a huge hole. What in the world? Yoan looked down, but he couldn't see anything. He then jumped down. It was a few meters deep, which was not safe for any normal human to jump down but Yoan was able to land easily with his walking skill. He then looked up to where he had come from. The entrance he went through looked more like an air vent from what he saw from below. The space he was in now was very wide. Whoa! Countless light-emitting stones were on top, brightening the entire place with the green light. It was so bright that it was hard to even look up at it. To think such a place was hidden inside the prison cave. It was amazing. He looked around and found a round stone pillar in the middle and nothing else. There was an exit at the southern side of the cave, and that was blocked by a stone from the outside. It's an unused place. It felt strange to not use such a nice place. Huh? Yoan then looked down and found traces of something being dragged out. From the size of it, one could tell that it seemed like a large stone was pushed out from it. As he followed the trace, it led him to the center of the area. There's more than one. The trace was made by more than once. 
It seemed like something was placed in five directions around the pillar until it was dragged out. It must have been very heavy if it made such a deep trace. It looks like there must have been some kind of giant stone, a pedestal? Yoan then thought of the blue pearl pedestal in the library. He then realized the library had five floors, which meant that the pedestal was also created through the five levels. Nano, activate augmented reality and show me the blue pearl pedestal on the first floor in the library. Activating. Yoan then was shown the actual size of the blue pearl stone. Nano, do you see those traces on the ground? Can you see if this stone was placed in any of those spots? Analyzing the traces on the floor. Nano then began scanning the five spots and placed the same blue pearl stone over the five spots. And when they were all in place, Yoan's eye grew larger. It has the same size. The size of the trace and the stone were the same. When the five stones were placed there, the one located on the south side shined in red. This location seems to be where the blue pearl stone from the first floor was located at. Yoan then walked over to check it out himself. Can you check the second floor one too? Nano then began scanning everything, and it seemed like the second stone was located on the southwest side. Ah, so, this was the place. It seemed that all those stones were originally placed here. If all of them were still here, then it would have been much easier to learn about Father Chun's original sword skill. What is up with this pillar then? Yoan was curious as to why all these stones were placed around it while facing the pillar. Yoan walked over and looked around. On the north side of the pillar, there was a letter written in handwriting. Sword Force of the Sky Demon. Yoan felt his heart pounding. He then found a small dots that looked like those under the writing of the blue pearl stone which showed a drawing. Chapter 59, Blessing in a Disguise, Part, 4. A martial art that represented the lord of the demonic cult was the godly force of the sky demon. Every cultist knew of the power beyond that martial art and it was also one of three godly forces of the Jianghu. But the word said sword force, not godly force. Hmm, is it a sword skill? Chen Youwan was confused. He had never heard of sword force. Was it a breathing skill or a sword art? He learned from Guard Zhang that the Lord's best martial art was the sword art of the Sky Demon. But what was the sword force? Is it the name of the original sword skill in the Blue Pearl Stone? That seemed to be the most likely case here. The bearded middle-aged man who Yoan met on the first floor of the library said that the Blue Pearl Stone held the truth from Father Chun. He would leave a new name for it of course. I guess Father Chun is the one who wrote this here. It was natural for making up such a name for a powerful sword art like that, especially if it was made after the sword art of the Sky Demon. Nano, can you check the writing on this pillar to see if it matches the writing on the Blue Pearl Stone pedestal? A white line then scanned the writing on the pillar and Nano soon responded. Analysis complete. It is from the same writer. That is the name then. Yoan then learned the real name of the original sword skill he had learned. What up with these holes then? Yoan then looked down at the holes underneath the name. Holes under the poetry on the pedestals represented numbers, but these holes look different. It looks like a drawing. The holes formed the shape of a dragon. Dargan? The animal in the myth symbolized unity and power. He would have not paid that much attention if he didn't find out about the secret behind holes on the blue pearl stone pedestal. He was curious if this drawing had some secret behind it also. What is it trying to say? Yoan then sat down to give it some thought. He brought the pedestals to his left and right and began looking closely at the holes in the shape of a dragon. However, he couldn't find identify any relationships between these holes. Are the holes related to the numbers again? Yoan then counted the number of holes. 24? There was a total of 24 holes. He wondered if the number 24 meant anything. After thinking for an hour, all he could think of was the sword movement comprised of the sword force of Sky Demon and its 24 movements. What is it talking about? Phew. He sighed in frustration. He couldn't find any answers. What did this soaring dragon mean? It should mean something, why is there a drawing of a dragon going up, huh? Yoan then looked up at the ceiling. Ugh. The light stones from above shine down on him, making him look down. It was too bright to look up directly. It's too bright. It was too painful to look directly at the stones. Yoan looked up because the dragon was trying to go up into the ceiling, but he then thought that maybe the secret was on the ceiling. However, he couldn't look directly at it to see what was going on up there. HM. Maybe the secret was hidden behind the light, not the darkness. Nothing left by Father Chun Ma was easy to get, but Yoan had a way to look directly into the light. Nano, can you control the light coming into my sight? Adjusting light perception. Yoan's eyes flickered and the cave turned dark. Yoan then looked up again as he was ready. This is amazing. 
Yohan was astonished. There were a number of shiny stones, but the ones around the giant center pillar showed hundreds of bright stones with writings. This was it. Yohan smiled. He wasn't sure what these hundreds of stones were talking about, but they surely held the secret related to the sword force of the sky demon. Nano, can you scan those stones? Yes, master, scan completed. Project it on that large wall so I can see it more closely. Nano then recreated the writing on the ceiling over on the wall. Yoan walked over and checked the writing. What? Yet, the writings weren't related to martial arts at all. It consisted of poetry and other things. This, and this, and this, what is going on? All of them had no relations to martial arts. Yoan frowned as he had expected a great finding. Did I miss something? He thought that going through all of these writings would give him the answer to a great secret, but even if there was a secret hidden within the writings, it didn't seem like it would be that hard to decipher it. Maybe it's hidden among all this. Yoan figured there must be something that was related to martial arts. Finding it was the problem. Of course, he didn't need to read all this writing by himself. Nano, can you find anything among all this that might have a relationship to martial arts? Scanning. Nano proceeded with the scanning. This shortened the amount of time Yoan needed if he were to look at every stone. Soon, Nano finished scanning and analyzing. There is a total of 24 stones that contain writings and drawings that seems to teach the breathing skill. Breathing skill? Yoan's eyes grew larger. What kind of breathing skill would be divided up into 24 stones? Nano then highlighted the 24 stones in red. Yoan's eye grew larger as he looked at it. This. Chapter 60, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 5. It was astounding. Over hundreds of stones were placed around the pillar, and 24 of them had placed in the shape of a dragon soaring up into the sky. It was the same shape that was placed on the pedestal. So, this was what that dragon meant. This was it. Yoan's voice became excited from the finding. He then quickly wanted to look into what meaning it held. Nano, get rid of the other stones and leave only those 24 stones. Understood. And Nano's voice trailed off, the extra stones in the image began to disappear. Yoan looked closely at the remaining stones. There were writings and teachings related to a breathing skill. However, it didn't seem like any other breathing skill. What is this? The writing required a certain movement and flow in the internal energy through certain blood points. And the movement of the skill was very familiar. Yoan frowned as he knew these movements. This is similar to the movement of the sword force of the sky demon. It was the exact same sword movement. Yoan then walked over to other stones. After checking out every stone, his eyes shook in shock. Oh my, these are all sword movements from the sword force. All the movements recorded on the stones were equal to the 24 sword movements of the sword force of the sky demon. However, those were all paired with the related breathing skill, and that was connected from the head of the dragon to its tail. This is strange, it's really strange. This was strange if these things represented a breathing skill. A breathing skill usually required one to sit or lie down to take a comfortable position, but this was one with the sword movement to display a sword formation. I should just give it a try. He had no way to find out unless he tried it out. Nano, can you transfer these teachings and movements into me? Understood. Transferring to the user's brain. Nano soon transferred all the information into Yoan's brain. When it was done, Yoan used his finger to follow the first movement. Take a deep breath and move into. The meditating also started. He had to connect all the movements together while in motion. Yoan followed the 24 movements and sent his internal energy into the blood points as written in the breathing skill. As the energy stopped flowing through his body, the chi in the body began to tremble. Yoan then repeated the 24 movements again without thinking, as if he had gone into a trance. The powerful energy flowed inside, and Nano began to analyze to store it as data. After some time had passed, Yoan stopped. He didn't even know how long he had been practicing this breathing skill. Nano, how long have I been doing this? It has been two hours. What? Two hours? It was shocking to hear that he had been moving through the movements for two hours straight. Yet, he didn't feel exhausted or tired. It even felt like he was full of energy and the internal energy was flowing fluidly within him. It felt like the energy flow became faster as I moved through. Yes, that is true, master. Nano had recorded the quick energy flow within the body already. Yoan then became curious about Nano's conclusion and brought up his internal energy. Huh? The speed of the internal energy flow had gotten much faster. He focused slightly and the energy spread into his body very quickly. When Yoan focused on his right hand, a clear light appeared to create a chi on his hand. It's much faster now. 
Yohan was not used to shaping qi outside his body. But with the quickened energy flow, shaping qi was also much easier now. The breathing skill that was written on the stone was beyond the level of any breathing skill. Ah, this should be the best breathing skill in the world. Chun Yohan was astounded beyond belief. There was no telling as to how much he would grow if he trained with the breathing skill. Yohan then walked over to the pillar at the center. Sword Force of the Sky Demon. He now knew why this was written as Sword Force. This martial art was a sword formation and breathing skill combined into one. So Father Chun really was a legendary man. No one else in the Wulin would even dare to combine a sword skill with a breathing skill. The sword force of the Sky Demon would allow one to train the sword skill while meditating with the breathing skill. Father, please accept my bow. Yohan then bowed twice to the pillar. It was to show his respect for receiving such a gift from the ancestor. Yohan then got up. This is fortunate that I came across this. Beko's action to put Yohan into danger was truly a blessing in disguise. If Beko found out about what followed after he left, he might collapse because of a stroke from the shock. So, there's only one thing left to do then. Yohan then walked over to the pillar so he could erase the traces. He couldn't do it near the blue pearl stone pedestal since there were guards, but no one was here. It would be hard to find out what Father Chun had left without Nano's help, but he didn't want to leave any hints for the others to find out about it. I'll just erase these holes. Yohan then reached out to the holes while wielding internal energy in his hand. That's when the pillar began to tremble while letting out steam. W what? Yohan jumped back. Something came up from the pillar and soared up into the ceiling, striking the glowing stones. The ceiling shook and some of the stones dropped to the ground. Yohan was shocked, but he quickly hopped to dodge the falling stones. It seemed like the shock wasn't too bad, since only a few stones had dropped. Huh? Yohan's eye grew wide. The number of stones that dropped was the 24. No way. He then walked over and frowned. The stones were those with the movements and writings from the sword force of the sky demon. Chapter 61, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 6. Yohan had to rely on nano skills to find out about the breathing skill, but the pillar was programmed to make it easy to find these stones as well. It was surprising. Well, I guess you would need such a thing to find out about it without nano. What was funny was that no one had even tried it before. No one dared to do what Yohan had done to the pillars until now. Huh? Yohan then noticed the place where he bowed at the front of the pillar sank in the middle and liquid seeped out from it. He tasted it with his finger and found out that it was oil. Is it made for fire? The pillar had a mechanism to burn itself when its duty was complete. The oil was to be wet when it sent down those stones so that the internal energy would be able to light it on fire. Umph. I got it anyway. He was lucky at least. Yohan realized it was easy to get these stones too late, but could now destroy it. Now it will be easy to erase those holes on the pillar. Yohan then walked over and picked up one of the stones to destroy it. Huh? He then became confused. What is this? There was something engraved on the other side of the stone. Yohan looked down at it, and saw weird lines on it, unsure of what it meant. Those lines were hidden from sight. This is strange. Yohan then looked over at the other stones. Huh? This one has it too. The other stones also had weird lines etched onto them, but they all had different shapes from one another. What is it? Why are there lines on the back of the stones? Yohan then gathered every stone and gathered them in one place. He then turned them backward to show the strange lines. Hmm. Yohan moaned. He stared at it, hoping to find anything that might be hidden behind it, but the lines just looked like doodles. What are these? It was really strange. But nothing left by Father Chun was there without reason, so there had to be a message. It's not made with a sword at least. The lines were too crooked to be made with a sword. Then what were these things trying to say? After looking at it for a long time, Yohan narrowed his eyes. Hmm? Yohan got up and looked down at it from the top. He then sat down and made the stones face each other. After putting them together, he got up and looked down again. Oh. He then realized that the lines seemed to form some kind of map. The lines didn't match up yet, but he was certain that it was a map. I need to order it right. Yohan then sat down and began matching the lines. After moving from stone to stone for over an hour, Yohan finally completed it. I did it. All the lines perfectly matched each other now. Yohan got up and looked down again. I knew it, it's a map. It was a one giant map created with crooked lines. This. The map marked a certain place, and there was another line that gave directions on how to get there. To think such a map was hidden here? What would be hidden at the place indicated on this map, other than the sword force of the sky demon? It had surely been left for the next generation. And where is this? 
He knew it was a map, but it was hard to know the locations that this map represented. There were strange crooked lines that showed some kind of cave map. Yohan only came to that conclusion after staring at it for a long time. I can't be sure of anything for now. What was certain was that this map was not for this prison cave. It was probably a place hidden somewhere else, but it was not possible to know for now. Nano, scan this map and save it. Understood, master. Yohan then saw white lines moving down the map. Nano saved the map and Yohan began to move to do what he intended to do the first time. Yohan began destroying the stones one by one. After cracking the stones, he collected all the debris and stomped them to turn them into powder. He then scattered away the rock particles and sand. Now, all secrets in the map that was hidden inside this cave was only for Yohan. Yohan then got up to go back the vent and he returned to his small prison cave. And for the first time after he was locked up, he was able to get a good night's sleep. Chapter 62, Blessing in a Disguise, Part 7 For days had now passed after Yohan was locked up. There was only a day left for Yohan to come out and there had been a lot of changes within the academy. When Yohan was sent to the prison, the only ones who had yellow tags were Chun Muyin of the Wise Clan and Chun Yuchan of the Blade Clan. However, for days were enough for talented cadets to learn about the Seven Demon Sword. Ko Wang'er's concern became a reality. Chun Yohan was still in prison, but all the other yellow tags were taken by powerful cadets. However, there were only 11 cadets that became leaders. There was a total of 17 tags, so why were there only 11 group leaders? This was due to three particular leaders. There was no limit to how many tags one could take. Three people realized this and collected every tag they could get their hands on. Chun Muyin had one tag. Chun Yuchan had four tags. Chun Kungwon had two tags. Sama Chuk, the 700th cadet, had two tags. And seven other cadets had one tag each. So with Yukin, Kungwon, and Chuck hoarding more than one tag, they had taken five more tags that could have been used to create more leaders. The only surprising thing was that Chun Muyin didn't go for other tags. Now, with 16 tags in the cadet's hands, the only tag left was the one that Ho Jincheng had. No one could take this tag from him as he was a grandmaster level warrior. This is problematic. Hu Bong shook his head. All cadets knew that the three leaders had more than one tag, but no one dared to raise complaints. They are that much more powerful, Ko Wang'er answered as he nodded. These three cadets were famous for their prowess. Rumor had it that their martial arts skills were at the level of exceeding masters. Moreover, they all had their armies of cadets behind them. It could have been dangerous for us too. Zhao Wumin smiled bitterly as he spoke. The reason he said this was because Yohan's group had taken a steep drop after Yohan was taken to the cave. They were no longer a group, but rather, regular cadets. Maybe we're lucky. We lost those who were going to lose anyway, Ojong said with an annoyed expression. The other cadets also became angry. A total of six cadets had gathered here. We just have different paths. Ko Wang'er shook his head. I don't think their way of doing things will make other groups welcome them. Hu Bong mumbled in disappointment. On the day of Yohan's arrest, two of their team members left them. They were Wang Chen and Ho Daiming. They had been very anxious ever since they heard that Yohan had destroyed Chen Jiangsum's internal energy. As soon as Yohan's punishment was decided, they left right away. I'm sorry. I want to stay together, but I don't see a future in this. Maybe this was the right tactic to safely pass the third test. But they didn't only join Yohan's group for the test and the members became angry. Although two members had left, six cadets were still here. It was due to the 18th cadet, Baki. Hu Bong got up and said, oh well. Let's not be too pessimistic. We lost two baddies, but we have Baki here with us. He'll do quadruple the amount they ever could have done. Don't flatter me too much. Baki smiled. Ko Wang'er smiled also. No, we would have been in grave danger if it wasn't for you. Ko Wang'er had a reason for this. It was because of the yellow tag that Baki had on his right chest. He had taken this tag three days ago by defeating an instructor. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, we would have all been scattered. We are really grateful. Ojong also nodded. If it wasn't for Baki, Yoan's team members would have had to scatter and wait for Yoan to come back. When the punishment was decided, Baki came over to them and offered to take the lead. I owe a lot to the seventh cadet. I want to help him. Baki thought Yoan had taken the punishment that should have been for him. If Yoan did not tell him about the poison, he might have died. After thinking through the night, Baki made a serious decision. I almost died. It will not be enough even if I pay it back for my entire life. Thus, Baki decided to follow Chen Yoan. 
He wanted to tell Yoan himself of his decision, but Yoan was locked away. I'm not sure if he'll want me in his group. If Master didn't like you, he would not have helped you. Maybe. Ko Wang'er and the other cadets welcomed him after hearing what had happened. And with a powerful warrior like Bak Gi joining them, they were going to become stronger. So Bak Gi first took the yellow tag just in case. It was to prepare for Yoan Return who had to stay in prison for five days. Bak Gi's actions proved to be correct. Well, we welcome you to our group anyway. Don't worry. Yeah, we do. Master will welcome you too. I'm sure of it. Bakki smiled. And as the day came to an end, the five cadets who trained seven. Dragon Sword went to the cafeteria to eat dinner. Are you skipping dinner? I only eat dinners usually, but I ate lunch with you guys today too. Bakki usually skipped lunch to train in the private training room. But after joining the team and training with them, his solo training time was reduced. Hmm. Then I should skip dinner too. You? Bakki became confused at Ko Wang'er's decision. Bakki had spent a few days with them and Ko Wang'er ate a lot, which was fitting for his big body. It was shocking to hear Wang'er, who ate three times more than the other cadets, to decide to skip a meal. Well, you are our temporary leader, so you need protection. He didn't want to miss a meal, but he also thought that he needed to protect Bakki. There was no telling what might happen because of that yellow tag. Bakki then shook his head. I'm going straight to the private training room, so don't worry. Besides, we'll all be together when we leave the training room. Yes, but, it's okay. You go ahead and eat dinner. Bakki assured Ko Wang'er and headed off to the private training room. Wang'er usually made rational choices, but his temptation for a meal was so strong that he couldn't make up his mind. Oh Jong shook his head. Humph, Hu Bong, I will follow him, so you go ahead and eat. Oh, will you do that? Wang'er brightened up instantly. Yeah, as you said, he is our temporary leader. Thank you. Please look after Bakki. Ko Wang'er then gladly moved into the cafeteria. However, Hu Bong didn't look so happy while following Ojong. Do my thoughts not matter? Hu Bong wanted to eat too.